Hi guys, so if you are watching this video, then you decided that you were ready to do your roots for the week. And I'm pumped because you guys know how much I love roots and how much they can help us access our new work. So earlier in the week, you got two copies for your roots. You got this page right here um, that has opposite and against. And you also got this page that had like all this money looking stuff and a wallet on it. So what you're going to do right now, first thing, um, is you're going to pause the video. You're going to pause it. And you are going to cut these out. You want this thing right here to look like this. But then you are also going to be um, cutting extra snips in there so that each of these will be able to bend and fold by itself. Let's see if I can get them all in there. Um, I just have one more to go. Perfect. And then on this page right here, you are going to be cutting everything out individually so that you have all of these pieces separate. So you'll actually have quite a few things floating around for this. So make sure you have plenty of time to deal with this before you get it started because I would hate for you to lose any of these pieces. So let me show you guys how these are going to be glued into the notebook. Um, I'll show you how to glue first. So, of course, we're using our Roots notebook. So you're looking for the purple tape with the flowers on it. It has a little bit of green in it as well. And the last route that we did was for a photo. So you're going to flip to the very next page. And let's do opposite or against first. Um, so remember, once you've got this cut out, it's going to have all these little flippy pieces on it. And you're going to take your glue stick. And you're going to run the glue behind um, this little spine right here. So all the way down the spine. There we go. And so then you can even fold back these pieces a little bit so they flip a little easier on you later on. pretty good. All right, so we've got all these words for opposite and against, and then we're going to have our money. You're going to take the one that looks like a wallet, and this is going to be the weirdest instruction for today because um, this wallet is going to be holding all of these credit cards right here. So the way we have to glue this is a little bizarre. You are just supposed to put glue down the edge. So I'm going to do like the very back of this like dollar bill right here and go around the corner. We're trying to make it like it's a pocket. You could probably put a little more glue on the bottom um, just because you'll have a little more space and then go up the side. All right, and so from there, I'm going to just glue it on my page, maybe down here, just to do something a little different. Make sure you really get that pressed down because since we're using it like a pocket, I'm gonna make sure that it's really secure. So you be able to stick these things down in here later on. Um, so just make sure it's secure. All right, guys. So you've got them glued in your notebook, hopefully. And if not, then pause um, and do that until it's finished because there's no sense in listening to the video if you don't have your materials ready. So I'm just going to keep talking as if you pause the video if you need to and you haven't if you don't need to. All right, so our first route... Um, it's actually going to be a set of roots. All of these words right here are root, or all of these roots are roots that mean the opposite of something or against something. So already, as we look through this list, you can probably think of some words for everything probably other than um, contra right here that um, connect to like some negative things, um, negative words. And so on these words, we are going to write down, so this means specifically not or the opposite of, I'm going to write that on there, and then anti means against, D is opposite from or away. Uh, 
Um, counter means opposite. And contra means against. So I could honestly give you guys like a bunch of words that um, work for each of these, but let's just talk through some of them. I'll probably maybe just give you like two for each one, um, two or three. So dis, like the number one thing I think of is disappointed. Um, but instead, let's think about like computers, like disconnecting from Wi-Fi. So if you disconnect, you are not connected. Okay, and if you are dishonest, you are not honest. Um, and if you are, if you have a parent who disapproves, then they do not approve. So easy peasy, right? So basically you take that root and it means that everything that you have is the opposite of what we're saying. Okay, anti is similar. Oh, let's use antibacterial, because we know that word really well with COVID going on right now. So, antibacterial. We know that bacteria is a, um, a biological, like, I don't know if substance is the right word, but it's like a biological material that attacks um, a healthy body. And so if you have an antibacterial, it is going against bacteria. Um, if you have, let's use an antidepressant, that is a type of medicine that goes against the feelings of depression. That's a medicine that goes against the feelings of depression. Um, if somebody is antisocial, then that means that they are against being social. They're against being social. Now guys, if I'm writing too fast for you, then you might need to pause the video so that you can catch up. It's really up to you, um, but you do need to have these down because we need to learn these roots and we need to be able to benefit from them. All right, um, keep it on, keep it on. Um, so we have D, and D also means opposite from or away. So if you Let's go with destruct. So destructive is a word that means that things are being broken, right? Struct is actually um, an affix that means to build. And so if you are the opposite of building, then you are breaking it. You're breaking it. Um, if somebody is... Um, this word deport or deported. Um, port is a word that means like to come through like as in a door. And usually we think of people who are immigrants to different countries. And so if they are deported, then that usually means that they are sent away from arriving. Um, they're sent away from coming in. Um, and then... I think it's a good one. Okay, if we decode something, like we talk about decoding our words, or sometimes you have to decode a mystery, um, code is something that obscures and makes it difficult to figure out. Um, usually it's like a different way of speaking, 
but if you decode it, you are going the opposite away from the code. So that means that you are making it clear. You are making it not so much a puzzle anymore. All right, and we also have counter. Counter is the opposite. So if we have a counter attack, a counter attack would be um, an attack that is the opposite of the person that originally attacked. So that means that somebody attacked you and you go back and do it again. Um, sometimes people in business have counter offers. And a counter offer is when somebody gives you an offer, then you give them an opposite idea for a different offer. So like if somebody's like, it's like a, you could think of it as bargaining. So they're like, okay, well, I'll sell it to you for $100. And you're like, well, I don't have $100. I'll buy it for $50. And they're like, that's a counter offer. And then if they come back again, say, well, $50 is too low. How about $75? That's another counter offer. So it's the opposite of what that person said. And then do counterweight. So counterweight is the opposite of the original weight, so it helps balance things out. So um, that could happen in decisions. So like if somebody makes a tough decision, but there's a counterweight to it, then that can mean that it balances out. So it doesn't actually feel that bad. It doesn't feel that bad. All right, and the last one here is contra, which means against. So if you contradict, We'll learn this later, but D-I-C-T, dict, um, that is a suffix or a root that means to say. So if you say contra, against, that means you go against what is said. You, if you contradict yourself, then that means you said one thing and then you're doing another. Um, Thinking about contraction. So a contraction is a word that um, kind of goes against the typical word because you have punctuation in the middle of it. Um, so like instead of saying did not, you combine them together and then you add your punctuation so like did not becomes the word didn't and that goes against what's normal for spelling um, okay and then we have contract so a contract is something that binds somebody to rules usually in like a job position or um, business, and if you go against those agreements, against those acts, then um, you could have some repercussions. You could have some consequences for that. Um, so that's really important to make sure you don't break a contract, that you don't go against the acts that you come up with. All right, so on cred, this one's a lot easier because it's only one route that we're focusing on, and cred means belief. And some of these words that we have here, um, we're just going to write simple definitions on here. So we have credible. Let's do credible first. So when I think of the word credible, I think of like credible sources when you're doing some research. And when you're looking for things that are credible, it means that it's able to be believed. Able to be believed. And so if I'm looking for a credible resource on, okay, well, fourth grade is starting to learn about Native American groups, but I go to um, some website that doesn't have a lot of good research on it, then that's probably not going to be a very credible research, a re very credible website. So I'm going to stick this inside my wallet over here. Now let's do next one. There were five of them there. Um, okay. So credential. A credential is sometimes um, 
like a login, you might hear that like, oh, log in with your credentials. And using those pieces of information, it's able to be believed that you are who you are because you know them. Um, but also sometimes the credentials are a quality or a skill that makes people believe they can do a job. So um, if somebody's applying to be a teacher, um, if they don't have a teaching degree, then they don't have the correct credentials to do the job. That doesn't make others believe that they're going to be able to do the job of teaching if they don't have a teaching degree, for instance, or they haven't gone to college to be a teacher. So once you get that written down, skill that makes people believe they can do a job, or skill that makes other people believe someone else can do a job. Sorry, I, didn't, I don't really like how I phrased that, but someone else can do a job. All right, creditor. So a creditor is um, somebody who loans somebody extra money. And a creditor has to believe that someone is going to pay them back. So a person who loans money believing it will be paid back. Believing it will be paid back. A person who loans money believing it will be paid back. So a creed is a statement of beliefs. And that can usually be religious, but it doesn't have to be. A statement of belief. Usually in religion. A statement of belief usually in religion. Okay, and so our last little card here is incredulous. Incredulous. So um, there are a lot of little roots here. So we've got like in and then O-U-S at the end. We'll get to those things later, um, but we'll leave it to say just for the sake of it because this is almost a 20 minute video already. You're probably getting a little squirmy that um, if something is incredible, then that means that it is difficult to believe in a way. Sometimes incredible is a positive thing. Sometimes incredible is a difficult thing. You're like, wow, it's so incredible. Like people are having a hard time believing it. So um, incredulous is a specific action of not being able to believe something's happening. So, so you're like full of non-belief. So not believing something is true. Not believing that something is true. So full of disbelief, which, ha. Uh -huh, Disbelief means, let's go ahead and get that on here too. Not able to be believed, disbelief. All right, guys, don't forget that when it comes to our roots, that anytime you come across them, whether somebody says it or you find it in a book, you can always make extra lists of these words around your Word Nerds page. All right, thank you, guys.